is such a thrill for me. I can't even tell you because, uh, listen, we're all the same age practically. So I, you know, loved watching this documentary, Denny, because not only did it, was it the music of my youth and still is, however, it reminded me of how many of these albums I bought and still have. I mean, yeah. you guys, I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all of this phenomenal music. Yeah, so thank you. Start. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Absolutely. Oh, you're welcome. You're so well, where welcome. are you located? Where are you I'm located? in Toronto. I'm in Toronto, oh, okay. so I'm oh, sure yeah. that you guys have played here. I mean, come on, seriously, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, like millions of you. I know I've seen you for sure. Mm -hmm. So, Danny, I want, I, let's start with you. Let's kick it all off because clearly after the Wrecking Crew doc, which was so phenomenal, this to me seemed like the best, you know, uh, progression to do this, this doc. What kind yeah. of sparked it for you? I think, uh, well, when the producers came to me, and Lisa Roy was the band's publicist. She gave them the idea. So what do you think of this idea about these guys? And they brought it to me. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, that is the perfect uh, handoff of the Wrecking Crew. Because there was, listen, you could do so many different player, you know, stories of session players and they all could have their own single um, storyline. But there was something about this one because I remember at the end of the Wrecking Crew, um, Lou Adler said, I asked him, did you change your, when you did uh, Tapestry, did you consciously change your musicians and the sound, you know, something new? He goes, absolutely not. She, he goes, Carol King brought her own friends in. She brought in Cooch. She brought in James Taylor. Yeah. So, so it was like, okay, that makes total sense. And I knew about, you know, this was the next generation. The other thing is when they said immediate family, and I knew about the band and I knew, who was in it and it was like uh, all these legends and yeah. and i knew at the beginning of my, my first film i started it with this is the story of my father and his extended family the wrecking right. crew so there was this weird kind of like synchronicity about that and i thought i knew instantly why they call themselves immediate family because <laughs> i grew up with musicians i never played but i always see them hang and i know their friendships mean everything to them you know, through the years, you know, friendships of over 50 years for these guys. Oh, exactly. So, yeah. So it, it, so it made the perfect sense. And once I started, you know, so once we start looking into it and they just start talking to them, it was like, okay, it's over. <laughs> it's it's over. It's it's starting, you know, and yeah. Russ, let's just start with you. Um, I, first of all, like Denny just said, I mean, you guys are an immediate family. You're on tour together. You're, you're you know, you're doing um, your music still together. But what was it like for you to, for you guys to kind of sit around in that circle and just kind of rehash some of these stories, you know? Like I'm sure stuff probably came to you that maybe you guys haven't <coughs> talked about in a long time. I'm not sure if that's correct, but Russ, you want to kick that off? Well, one of the many reasons why Denny is a good filmmaker is that he, he knows things that, he knows the magic of how things work. And the round table is is a pretty magical thing to do because he knew what would happen. And what happens is that uh, you can't predict it. You just start with a topic and then it just it starts building and growing. And Leland would say something that would remind Wadi of something and then the story grows. And what about this time? And none of it's scripted. It just it, right. it has its own magic. And Denny's smart enough to have four cameras rolling, catching all of it, you know. And so you, what the reason that that scene works and you're commenting on it is because it's so real. Right. I mean, that was all just happening just the way that it did. Yeah, it's I just like I said, just brought back so many great memories for me. And, um, you know, look, I was lucky enough in, in, back in my day when I did a lot of interviews with musicians and I got to spend four days with James Taylor, um, just him prepping for one of his concerts. In, a, in an hour, in an it, hour. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, but it was amazing. It was like because he was my you know, he was my guy, you know, to spend that kind of time with him in the band and rehearsing. And I, I just drank in every second of it, you know, and Leland, I, I just, you know, for you, um, I always, I don't know. I mean, I've always loved the front singer, obviously, Carol King, James Taylor, et cetera, et cetera. But I was focused on the musicians because for me, they always stood out. I mean, how, how thrilling is it for you to, 
to be able again to relive through this through this doc and then get that kind of gratification you know i mean i'm a true fan of all of you guys <laughs> <laughs> this is this is really a, a ride that I never expected in my life, and uh, and it's really a joyous thing. I think the most fun that uh, the thing I really enjoy, I think the most is I've I've been to a whole bunch of the screenings and done the Q and A's afterwards, and I, that's really one of the things when the audience starts talking about what all of this meant to them yeah. and benchmarks like they'll pick out different different people will pick out different parts of the movie. And talk about that. That that I knew, I was there. I knew that happened. You know, or so, and and just sitting and watching it, it 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 takes what we've done for all this half a century plus, um, uh, into another level. You know, and, and you know, I'm used to being on a stage or in a studio making music that goes out to people, but th this is more interactive when we're actually there with them, yeah. and then you can have this dialogue after a movie and, and and hear their thoughts on it and so that for me has been the, the really exciting part of this whole thing i'm i'm so flattered that they that what we've done uh justified in people's minds to to create a movie about and and i've been a fan of denny's for forever and uh, i thought the wrecking crew was a brilliant piece of work and uh, so when we were approached to this it was like i was just kind of going really us you know wow uh it's been it's been amazing and I'm, I'm so proud of the whole team i'm proud of the band yeah you know because everybody's as much fun as we have doing what we do everybody's dead serious about what they do and they've worked their asses off you know it's not a you know one hit wonder kind of thing these guys oh they played on a record and then you know i mean the the body of work when i look at the collective discography of everybody it's pretty staggering oh yeah uh, yeah, and, uh, I, I, it wasn't long enough for me, this documentary, I have to say, Denny. It should oh. have been a lot longer, I, I think, you know, because I anyway, okay, Wadi, I don't want to ignore you. I'm trying to I'm trying to make the rounds here. Um, what is it about a session player that drives you? And that you know, let's say there's this young kid watching this interview right now, watching the documentary, going, Man, I love playing my bass, I love playing my guitar, my drums, whatever it is. But you know, it, it, I guess it takes a certain um, mentality. I don't know, drive. What What is it that you guys, because even though I said I, I am somebody who listens to that background music and everything, but it takes a special person to kind of sit back and not have their egos flaring. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what you mean, yeah. We, uh, we've been really lucky to be involved in so many great sessions and stuff. But I mean, when you walk into a date for the first time, and especially if you're new, you have to be ready for conversations that are going <laughs> to be flying around you that you're not prepared for. But more importantly, you have to be ready to come up with the goods. When when we started, uh, un unlike the Wrecking Crew, the Wrecking Crew would walk into sessions and be given a chart with what to play on it. But yeah. we, our generation, by the time we started getting seriously working, we were being brought in to do what we do, you know. So we would be giving, we'd be given a very simple chord chart, and they wanted to hear what we would bring to it. But you also have to be, you got to have a sense of humor. You got to have a real sense of self. You got to have a, what can I say, skin in the game for sure. Yeah. You have to be ready for it all, and um, you have to be ready to get interrupted while you're talking. And you have to. Our life is basically built on counterpoint. To, right. a, to a melody and a, and a record. And that's our gig. No matter what else goes on in that room, when you go out to play, you're making sure you're bringing whatever you can to this great tune and for this singer. And yeah. for me, especially, I'm always looking for, the, if there's a hole in the melody somewhere, I just mean a space of a few beats, I'm trying to find a lick that'll connect those parts. You know, my, my melodic sense is always trying to find something that'll uh, either get me fired or keep me hired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep you hired. I don't think any of you guys need to worry about that. And just, I, I only have a couple of minutes of it. Jenny, I just want to wrap it up with you just because, um, you know, I, I don't think that there was probably anybody who you approach who would say, no way, I'm not going to talk about these guys. Like they owe their careers to these guys. Like there's no <laughs> question about it. But here's the question I have for you. Given all the phenomenal music, was it hard to get clearance for all of this stuff? <laughs> Well, every time it comes up, it makes me panic thinking I was too naive <laughs> again the second time. 
Um, there was only one song. Uh, unfortunately, it was a minor publisher that said no to Hurt So Bad. But other than that, wow, uh, the publishers and the, uh, and the labels, they came through. I got to say, they, you know, listen, we have to pay for music. I don't not want to pay for music because that's how I went to school. I went, I had medical care. My father was a musician. Unless you want to give us your music for free, I want, I'll pay for it. I want to pay for it. Um, it's when, if they get out of hand, then it's like, why are you doing that? Why, you know, but none of the labels and publishers did that. They're all, you know, they're very much supportive of, of this, the, these films, you know, but. As uh, they should be. Yeah. yeah. But my yes, next film, my, my next film is about a harmonica player and he's a soloist. Okay. And he wrote all his own material. And he writes his own material. That's what my feeling is. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Listen, guys, again, oh, from, the, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank you so much for so many years of phenomenal music. I am not going to stop listening to them. I, I'm just a 70s girl at heart. So what can I tell you? Um, and it's just such a pleasure to talk to all of you today. Thank you so much and happy holidays to all of you. Really. Thank you, Bonnie. Good morning. Thanks, Bonnie. Good morning. Here, Thanks for taking the Toronto. time. Come back to yeah. Toronto with the immediate family, okay? Please. We'd love to. We'd love to. Okay, right. take care. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.